day. My name is uh, Gary Meyer. I'm a forensic psychiatrist, and I'm in the conference center at Mendota Mental Health Institute, where I'm going to make a presentation on the Effigy Mounds New Perspectives. As, you, as some of you know, uh, the grounds at Mendota Mental Health Institute have some of the largest bird effigies, in particular eagle effigies. And because I lived on the grounds here for four years and worked here for over 30 years, I developed an intimate relationship with those mounds and have gone on to write a book entitled The Eagle's Voice, Tales Told by Effigy Mounds. And the presentation that I'm about to make is going to include new perspectives that I've developed over the last 15 years. What I'm going to try to do today is explain, first of all, the sources that I've used to make this uh, presentation. And then we're going to retire eventually to my study where I'll be able to have a more informal conversation with you about the various uh, issues that I would like to raise. The first uh, person I have to um, acknowledge is Professor Jim Shears. He's a emeritus professor retired from the Department of Engineering on the campus here at uh, the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And he conducted over a uh, hundred aerial surveys of various mounds groups, including in 1985, an aerial survey of the mounds on our grounds. And I've relied heavily on his work, his surveys, and his guidance to uh, come up with some of my ideas. The second uh, reference I would like to make is to Paul Radden's work. He wrote a book entitled The Winnebago Tribe. He lived with the uh, Winnebago from uh, 1905 to about 1913. He learned their language and he was called Stands on Water by the elders that he worked with. This book is a key reference that would help European Americans understand the basic issues related to the Ho-Chunk culture and effigy mounds. He also wrote a number of books, including The Trickster, The World of Primitive Man, and Primitive Religion, Its Nature and Origin. All of his works bear um, an important place in my presentation. The next authority would be two people, Robert Birmingham and Leslie Eisenberg. Their groundbreaking work entitled Indian Mounds of Wisconsin describes the basic elements that are needed to both understand what the effigy mounds are not, that is, they were not built by the lost tribes of Israel, and what they are. A second reference by uh, Bob Birmingham would be the fine work that he's put out in a book called Aztalan, Mysteries of an Ancient Indian Town. Aztalan is about 20 miles east of Madison and had platform uh, temple mounds at the corners of the compound. The next reference I've relied on is a professor of anthropology by the name of Robert Hall. His book, An Archaeology of the Soul, describes burial practices that the Native Americans, including the Ho-Chunk, uh, practiced in uh, uh, this part of the Midwest. This is a treasure trove of information regarding the ceremonies related to burials. Equally important is a book by Increase Lapham. It's called The Antiquities of Wisconsin as Surveyed and Described. Increase Lapham surveyed probably a hundred sites and he's recorded uh, in this book perhaps 60 sites. His work is excellent and was followed by Professor Schur's work with more accurate surveys uh, using aerial uh, uh, photography. My next reference is a book called Effigy Mounds, A Guide to the Effigy Mounds National Monument by Lenzendorf. This book gives a great history of the uh, development of effigy mounds in that part of Iowa across the river from Prairie to Sheen in McGregor, Iowa. It gives the history of the development of the, of the Effigy Mounds National Monument that was signed into law in 1949 by President Truman. 
The Average Miles National Monument uh, is under the Park Service and currently Jim Nested is the uh, superintendent. He has been a valuable supporter of uh, some of my work. Equally important is another author, David Lee Smith. He's a Nebraskan Ho-Chunk. His book, Folklore of the Winnebago Tribe, is an excellent presentation of four classes of Ho-Chunk stories, starting with the creation myths, the origin of the clans, and ending up with myths that illustrate uh, moral tales. Finally, I will just make note of my work, The Eagle's Voice, Tales Told by Indian Effigy Mounds. In this book, I attempt to interpret the mounds on the grounds of Mendota Mental Health Institute using a four-day journey of the soul to Earthmaker. And it's my opinion that they laid out some of the mounds here to, in accord with the four-day journey to try to get a more comprehensive understanding of the origin of tribal consciousness from the early to late period, I have relied on the work of Ken Wilbur in a book called Up From Eden. This book is a valuable resource to try to understand the difference between changes that are called magical and changes that are called intentional. So the main thrust of this presentation called Effigy Mounds New Perspectives is to try to understand the origins for these great monuments. For a period of about 550 years, the ancestors of the Ho-Chunk built images of animals and humans, and the question has been raised uh, over the years, why did they do it and what meaning do they have? And it's my hope during this presentation to share with you uh, some repeating patterns that I found that can give some meaning to the effigy mounds and show in fact that they were the product of uh, uh, men of genius, that they were uh, originated in the uh, clan structure of the uh, Ho-Chunk and that they were used principally, uh, the burial mounds were used as uh, ceremonial sites for rebalancing the world ceremonies. And so the intent here is to use, with the references that I've shown, um, a, a way to understand the effigy mounds uh, as an outsider might understand them. When I first became aware of the effigy mounds, I had a real yearning to understand why they placed a particular mound in a particular place. And uh, since I was on, the, since my site of work was the place where they had the largest eagle effigies. I used to walk by these every day and wonder why was this mound placed here and in this position? And over time, uh, and with the help of many other journeyers, including some Ho-Chunk, uh, and using the best uh, uh, aerial photography to get alignments, I was able to uh, come to see that there are repeating patterns in these that carry information and carry on the meaning of, uh, I think, life to the builders of the effigy mounds. My interest in coming to understand effigy mounds grew and I became part of a founding group called the Ancient Earthwork Society, started by Professor Jim Schurz, a civil engineer at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. And over the years, as I gained knowledge, I wrote a book, Interpreting the Mounds, at Mendota Mental Health Institute. The book was called uh, the Eagle's Voice, Tales Told by Effigy Mounds. Since that time, I have uh, come to find recurren recurring patterns in the mounds and believe that the builders intended these. And so what I'm hoping to do in this series of five parts entitled Effigy Mounds New Perspectives is share those with you.